Every time I go out, I never actually expect to catch any fish. This year, we've been trying to travel more. Here in Texas, we've gone to several different places, including a few state parks. When Galveston State Park opened for the first time in years, we were there for the first day, the grand opening, so it was only fitting that we would find ourselves there on the week of my birthday as well. For me, a perfect birthday is spending a few days in our travel trailer with my family. Not completely off grid, but disconnected just enough from the daily distractions and rigors of modern life. The first time was the beginning of the first cold front coming through the area. Nothing we really didn't expect around this time of the year, except I really didn't truly expect it. The wind was raging at 26 knots with a locational gust of 35 knots. Our comfort rocked all night. The next day wasn't any better. The ocean was moving sideways along the beach, the wind was blinding, and there was no way I was getting any lines out. Not to waste a day due to the very unfavorable conditions, we opted for Sea Wolf Park. Sea Wolf offered some shelter from the wind, but that's really about it. What it didn't offer was shelter from the massive crowd of flounder anglers that gather around Sea Wolf Park during the flounder run in the upper Texas coast. Right, so we're gonna set up a double drop rig here. I lost my other rig casting out. A rubbed against somebody else's line when they were really in a fish. They, they, their fish went way to the left and my line was over here, so uh, it broke off. So I'm gonna try to catch some sand trout. Man, it's been, been kind of slow, so hopefully uh, luck changes. We got a bunch of shrimp in here. Look at all this, oh my God, look how dirty this food is. It's so bad in here. But this is what we're gonna use to catch some prime bait fish. I run out of rigs, but luckily most of the time I bring uh, stuff so I can make new rigs. So here we go, we got a 400 pound black leader. I'm gonna put a swivel on there, put it on the sleeve. Hey, your spinning reel's going off. Is it? Yes. I thought I heard something clicking. Yeah, it's going off. Mama, you're on the tail! Oh, it sure is. Uh, let me finish this rig real quick. Let me finish the rig while the fish is coming. <laughs> Cast it out.
few whiting, sand trout, and some catfish. Not what I was really looking for. Everyone at sea was steady catching flounder, shoulder to shoulder along the banks. But again, like I said earlier, this is not what I'm here. Now, I used some of the sand trout for bait. Nothing really happened. I guess I got here too late because sometimes sea wolf produces, you know, sporadically in the morning, evening, day, really any time that the fish decide to eat. A lot of people like to use the solonar. To me, that doesn't work. For other people, it does. So we head back to the Galveston State Park for another night of winds ripping through the campsite. The park was howling all night. But in the morning, we woke up to a quiet we hadn't heard in days. The winds had finally receded and our hopes were restored. Backing up for the surf was exciting, thinking that we might actually have a chance. This is the bull red run going on right now. If you're watching this video today, in October, the bulls are running. Now the process of the bulls running, you know, they flock into the bay, but they come in and out and go out. You know, sometimes they're flushed out by north winds, which pushes them along the beach into the jetties. And sometimes when you have hard south winds, they go into the bay system deeper in there. So, you know, you have to listen to the weather. And sometimes the weather just isn't perfect. And you have to fish with the conditions that you are given, you know. Like I told a lot of people, and a lot of people ask me, what is the best time to fish? And in my opinion, the best time to fish is when you can go out and fish. We don't all have the luxury to wait for the perfect conditions to fish. Guys, here we are at an unknown private beach. Hope we can catch something. So we're gonna set up a uh, double drop rig, try to see what kind of fish are out right now. Got the usual fish bites, shrimp. We're gonna cast this out, probably end up right here in the weight gut, see what's going on in there. So far we got seaweed all going on on here, so hopefully it's not too bad. We're gonna try to fish through it, so uh, let's do it. Nice croaker right here, check it out y'all. Nice croaker. What should we do with it? Cast it out live? Let's do it.
I just pulled out a, a croaker. I gotta try to get this line in first before it starts going across the beach because this freaking current is so strong. Look at that, it's already down the beach. It's crazy. This is the, the typical is just, you know, the lighting, but look at this giant croaker. This is the second croaker we catch that's this big. Look at that, y'all. The croaker are running. You usually get a croaker running the fall, and you can load up with some big croaker. These used to get bigger a long time ago. Look at Check it out, y'all. Big croaker. They used to get like 20 inches back in the day when the people started croaker soaking for trout and stuff. They couldn't use lures, but they wanted to use trout to catch. I mean, they wanted to use croaker for trout. This is why this is as big as they get nowadays. Back in the day, 15, 20 years ago, you could catch croaker yay big, like slot, slot red size. But like I said, you know, the bait shop started selling them to catch trout. This is what you get. At this point, everyone is starting to give up. We can't keep any lines in the water. The seaweed is just so bad. I could cast my line 20 yards to the left of me. The current is so strong, the seaweed is so heavy, that that current would push my line 40 yards to the right down the beach. It was terrible, you know, it, was, it just felt like a waste of time to be out there. But you know what? It's better than being at work. You know, I would rather come out here skunk to spend some time with my family play with the kids then be at work even if I don't catch anything you know that's fishing but unfortunately every time that I fish a Texas State Park I'm left feeling down I have yet to break the curse this year every Texas State Park I've been to has defeated me so much so that now <laughs> we refer this recurring problem the curse of the Texas State Park this is just my personal experience. I'm not saying that all the parks are cursed, that you're gonna go out there and not catch anything. 